trigger warning. Today's STP deals with issues of suicide and may contain graphic descriptions of suicide ideation. So we are more than halfway through Mental Health Month. As you know, I am one of the ambassadors, the community ambassadors. I have had a ball this month. Uh, It's been great being open and honest about mental illness. Um, When you're inside mental illness, it can be easy to assume that everybody understands, even those closest to us, what certain things, uh, certain symptoms look like and feel like. A couple of people have reached out to me this month and have asked very, very specific questions about suicide ideation. So what we're going to do on STP today is we're going to talk suicide ideation. What is it? How does it work? And what can you do about it? I mean, it's it's a difficult question. Uh, this is going to be an important discussion, and I do want to stress that there is a trigger warning in effect for today's podcast. Um, let's dive in, eh? Welcome to Shattered the Podcast. Sharing the lived experience of mental illness on a father, a mother, a family. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Well, good day and welcome to another STP. It is, um, we're, what, three quarters of the way? through October. It has been Mental Health Month. It's been encouraging. The people that I've had the opportunity to sit down and talk to and have conversations with this month, uh, I'm very excited that the next generation is not going to treat mental illness the way that my generation did. There has, however, been a few questions. People have asked me uh, repeatedly, in the last actual week or so, about suicide ideation. And it's a funny thing because I thought it was something that most people understood, but clearly um, I'm in the minority. So suicide ideation, what is it? Okay, so first and foremost, it's important to understand that suicide ideation is, strictly speaking, somebody who has thought or is thinking about suicide. That's the strict definition. Somebody has an idea around committing or attempting or trying to take their own life. Suicide ideation, though, is more than just thinking about it once. Often, it's somebody that is consumed with thoughts of taking their own life. Now, let's dispel a couple of myths about um, suicide and mental illness. Many, many people consider taking your own life to be a choice. And it's hard to see that it wouldn't be a choice because at some stage, somebody has to decide that they are going to take an action and they're going to do something that will end up in their life being taken. So in that essence, yes, it's a choice. But let's delve a little bit deeper into that because it's not a choice like somebody sat down and did a pros and cons list and went, you know, this is why I should stay. This is why I should go. uh, Balance it out. Let's check the emotions. Let's do the bank balance. Okay. uh, Looks like I should take my life. Now, Clearly, that may happen in some cases, but for the majority of people, thinking about suicide is something that they have no control over. And I'm going to talk about my experience today. Uh, The thoughts of killing myself came very soon after my initial diagnosis. In fact, they pretty much came in tandem. Uh, First and foremost, because I hated myself. I hated the fact that I had a mental illness. It disgusted me. It's a hard word, but it did. I was disgusted in myself. Thought I was pathetic. Thought I was weak. Just because I'd suffered an injury in the workplace. Now, when the thoughts of suicide came, it wasn't like I was thinking, oh, it wasn't a progression. It wasn't like everything's bad. And I waited up and... I just, I just don't think, it was more like, you need to kill yourself. 
oh, okay, I need to kill myself. And then those thoughts would just come and come and come. And there was nothing you could do about it. You couldn't turn it off. I remember walking home from a movie. Um, I used to do that. I used to go to movies by myself when I was healthy. Uh, It was just something that I did to de-stress. I would just go and watch a film. Well, this day, I can't even tell you what film I went to see. I don't remember it at all. What I do remember is the journey home. I had about a five kilometer walk to get home. uh, And everywhere I walked, I saw ways to take my own life. So I was on the top story of a mall. I looked over the edge of the mall and I thought this would be really easy. I walked out of the mall and I saw a couple of policemen. I was like, well, if I attack them, maybe they'll shoot me. Then I walked past some train tracks. thought, I'm going to just chuck myself off. And it wasn't just those three times. It was constant. Every time I saw something that could hurt me to the point of death, I was drawn to it and my mind was saying, just do it, just do it. I didn't have any control over that. And to this day, when things go bad, even when things are really good, (laughs) there'll be times that I'll be sitting there actually feeling great doing well amongst people I'm out, I'm, I'm doing something that I love, I might even be laughing. And then my mind will go, this is not going to last. You need to take your own life. You need to kill yourself. It's horrible. It's horrible. This idea that that's what your mind keeps putting in to your thoughts it's like you're you're obsessed over it but it's not your fault um it's like a a bell ringing every 30 seconds you know you have no control over it you know it's coming you don't want it to come but it's going to happen anyway you just can't do anything about it so suicidal ideation essentially is to think about taking your own life when it becomes clinical um, when it becomes overwhelming, that is generally what we're talking about with suicidal ideation. When a person has no control over those thoughts, where they seem all consuming, they seem like the only choice. Um, now, suicide ideation, it is not diagnosed yet, there is no a clinical diagnosis for suicide ideation. It is just something that people have experienced. It's very hard to quantify because when a person is depressed, they might be looking to make the choice to take their own life. But for the people that are just living their life and then bang, thought of, you need to take your own life. You need to kill yourself. Um, you, you're at somewhere where... It's dangerous. It's like, we'll just do it anyway, because you might die. Um, Yeah. Now, for me, I believe that I'm not going to ever be free of suicide ideation because I am my own harshest critic. Every time something doesn't go well, and in fact, a lot of the times when things do go well, It's like, well, that's the last time it'll go well. So you may as well just leave. I'm going to be living with this for the rest of my life. How do I combat it? And this is important. How do I combat suicide ideation? Well, I was sitting uh, lying (laughs) on a a gurney in an ambulance, in the back of an ambulance. I was covered in pepper spray. And I thought that the people in the ambulance with me were my assailant and they were trying to stab me. Uh, So when they were trying to take my blood pressure or look at my eyes, they were trying to stab, kill me. Thing of it was though, in that moment, I had what I would consider to be a moment of clarity. Um, The first one that I'd had in many, many years when I realized that I did not want to take my own life. 
I did not want to die. I wanted to be at home with my wife. Now, when I say it like that, it sound, it can sound problematic. Oh, I want to inflict it on her. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to, you know, it's very selfish. But those words contain what I consider to be a lot of unspoken power because it was it wasn't like I, I want to be home with my wife. It was like I want to be alive and I want to be at home with her. And no, I didn't want to be in a building with her. I just wanted her. I wanted to be with her. I didn't want to leave her. That was the day that suicidal suicidal ideation lost the battle for control of my mind. Because the thought of that overwhelming emotion of just wanting to be at home with my wife, realizing that there was something good that I could live for, that even if the worst happened, it would be okay because I would be with her. So now when the thoughts come, my mind immediately goes back to that gurney in that ambulance blinded by pepper spray, feeling like I'm on fire. Uh, People are trying to stab me, but I don't want to die. I want to be at home with my wife. So when those thoughts come, that's what I think about. And that thought, that emotion, that feeling is louder than the voice that's telling me to take my own life. It's stronger. It's more powerful. It's louder. I credit it as being the reason that I'm alive because today when something bad happens, um, I make a mistake and my mind goes, you know, you should kill yourself. I can click into that emotion and go, no, I don't want to die. It's not necessary for me to die. And I can overwhelm or overpower or outshout that suicidal ideation. This has been my experience. I've spoken to other people and I've used other strategies. One is the stay another day. When you're in a mental health crisis, when things look their bleakest, at times, What a person needs to do is just be patient because it will pass. Sleep on it. Stay another day. You won't feel as bad in the morning. You won't feel as bad next week. It's that cry to stay another day. Don't leave. Don't leave yet. Just wait. I know that other people have other strategies, but those are the two that I've heard about and that I use. That stay another day. I know that a lot of people have said that. I know that people have used specific events. (laughs) Um, I was listening to a guy talking the other day and he said when it was at its worst, he found out that the Star Wars movie was coming out. So he's like, oh, I really want to see that. So, okay, I'll, I'll kill myself after the Star Wars movie came out. Um, I joked and said, man, I hope it wasn't The Phantom Menace. <laughs> I hope it was actually one of the good ones. Um, but that's just the way that we think about it. You can use an event, a date, uh, a situation. Wait until then. I know people have used dates on the calendar. If things haven't gotten better by such and such a time and date, I'm out. Suicidal ideation can be confronted and it can be overwhelmed. I know that. I know that. And I'm talking about the ideation being overwhelmed, not the person. Because that's what's happened in my mind. The thought of hope 
well, it's not even hope because I know that if I'm at home with my wife, if I'm in living my life with her, not in her presence, but with her, with her in my life, then I have a reason to live. I have a very good reason to live. And that's what overwhelms that ideation in my head. Just because you live with suicidal ideation does not mean that you are going to kill yourself. It just means that it's an impulse that you can't control that um, will just be there. This has been a heavy one, very heavy, but not so much in the fact that you get depressed and sad about it. And I know that we've discussed suicide in ways that I don't normally discuss suicide. So, but then, and, and again, I come back to what I said at the start. It, it, it's been interesting to me that people have actually said, oh, what do you think about this? Or what does this mean? And I'm using terms and terminology that I use all the time in the mental health community, and they know exactly what I'm saying. It just comes back to understanding. Hey, look, there is always hope. I encourage you, stay another day. If you're living with somebody that's got suicide ideation, have the conversation. It's better to ask questions. Because when you're not asking questions or you're not showing compassion, a person's mind goes to, and it's completely wrong, that they are alone. They just need to know that they're not alone. And ask them, beg them, cajole them, bribe them. <laughs> Do anything you can to get them to stay another day. Hey, have a great week. I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Shattered, the podcast. I'd like to thank our producer, Meredith Brosnan, our executive producer, Torian Lau, and the band Adelaide for allowing us to use their song as our theme. Go to shatteredthepodcast.com for more information. <laughs>